morning, everyone, and welcome again to The Bridge. We're so glad that you could be with us today. If you brought your Bibles with you this morning, if you could open them to the Gospel this morning of Luke, we'll be looking at the 13th chapter, verses 10 through 17. I'll be reading from the NIV version of the Scriptures this morning. Again, that's Luke, the 13th chapter, verses 10 through 17. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up, and she praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue ruler said to the people, There are six days for work so come and be healed on those days and not on the Sabbath the Lord answered him you hypocrites doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water then should not this woman a daughter of Abraham who Satan has kept bound for 18 long years be set free on the Sabbath day from what had bound her this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For over 30 years, I want to move this just for a minute. For over 30 years, Dr. Rick Hodes, an American Jewish surgeon, has lived and worked in Ethiopia as a medical director for the American Jewish Joint Distribution Committee. And, of course, over the years, he's been in charge of the health of thousands of Ethiopians, ministering to the critically ill in refugee camps and medical clinics in small villages, such as Mother Teresa's Mission, a home for the sick and the poor children of Ethiopia. There he primarily works with three, quote, orphan diseases, and these are heart disease, spine disease, and cancer, childhood cancers. His work in Ethiopia has led him to treat over 1,000 spinal patients and hundreds of heart patients and cancer patients. He has literally saved tens of thousands of lives through his public health work in Ethiopia, his surgeries, his medical care for some of the poorest children on the planet. He's also adopted five children in Ethiopia. Let's meet one of the persons whose life Dr. Rick has transformed. Habtemu, a young Ethiopian Christian, was born in a village called Talili. Habtemu was born with a displaced spine. He was paralyzed for about a year when he was four years of age. His parents took him to five different Sabels, or holy water sites. Not once, but they took him a total of 95 times, 95 times to these holy water sites, and they would put holy mud onto his hands, and they would rub this holy mud onto his back, and holy water on his body. Eventually, he started walking again, but with great pain and great difficulty. Haptamu went to school, but students there were cruel. They teased him often about his back. He felt bad about himself and very, very lonely. Thankfully, a couple of boys befriended him, and despite his situation, he studied hard and he finished in 10th grade, which is the highest level of attainment in Ethiopia for what we would call high school. One day, someone told his family that there was a treatment for kids with displaced spines in the nation's capital, Addis Ababa, which is actually 100, 275 miles from the village of Talili. People told him, You'll find Dr. Rick at the children's hospital, and he'll help you. It was not an easy journey for him in his condition, 275 miles of arduous travel. And when he got there, believe it or not, the guards at the hospital tried to keep him away, just like the rulers of the synagogue did not want that woman to be healed on the Sabbath, right? Uh, and so he got not what we would call a friendly welcome, and finally, he did meet Dr. Rick, who told him that he had a very serious problem, something called an alpha deformity of the spine, an alpha deformity. Dr. Rick explained that there was a surgery, 
and the surgery was a long protracted surgery and the recovery from it would be a long and difficult process but without it he might one day suffer permanent paralysis so Habtemu decided that he wanted to have the surgery I think most of us in the situation if we had a chance for freedom of movement we would go for that versus a, a life of paralysis the surgery was indeed extensive he had a fusion from T1 to L1 in the vertebra, T1 to L1, with removal of the vertebra and ended up with four rods, 19 screws, and a cage. Can you believe all that? After surgery, he was completely paralyzed and he could not feel his legs, walk, or even control his going to the bathroom. But after five months of arduous physical therapy, every day, he started slowly, slowly getting the feeling back in his legs, and he learned to walk one step at a time. During the recovery, Habtimu said, quote, every step is difficult, but I'm learning to walk again, and this week I'm faster than I was last week. Isn't that a beautiful attitude? Beautiful. By the way, there was a, a documentary made by HBO in 2011 about Dr. Rick Hodes and his work, and it's called Making <clears throat> the Crooked Straight. Making the Crooked Straight. What an awesome title. Church, how do you think that Habtemu, this young man here, feels about Dr. Rick? How would you describe what he feels about this doctor? Oh, my goodness. Love, admiration, respect. In his eyes, this man literally gave him back his life his very life and dr rick is also one might say a liberator because he set this young man free from this alpha deformity that he was born with making the crooked straight you know who else is famous for making the crooked straight jesus christ in our gospel text today from luke 13 10 through 17 jesus dramatically heals a woman who had been bent over for 18 years. Can you imagine for 18 years? Like Habtemu, this woman had suffered a long time, not just from physical pain, but from social isolation. Sometimes the way other people treat us is worse than what's wrong with us. Sometimes the way that other people treat us in such an ungodly, unkind fashion can wound us more than a physical problem. I imagine that this woman had been ridiculed and she had been looked at as something was wrong with her, so don't mess with her for 18 years. Luke says that she had, quote, a spirit of infirmity, that she could not stand erect, so she could not look at you in your eyes, and she was twisted and bent over. You know, having such a physical condition absolutely affects one's mind and spiritual condition as well so it's not just a physical problem it becomes a, a, a mental and a physical a spiritual problem it's very easy to miss how this long suffering woman put herself in the pathway of being healed so we're going to focus on what jesus did in just a moment but i want to tell you that this woman put herself in the pathway to be healed her story is one of faithfulness but because before the miracle happened she went to synagogue every sabbath every sabbath she had a habit of going and worshiping god in the synagogue she wasn't going to allow her condition to keep her from praising god so church who else in the story had a habit of going to the synagogue to honor the Father, Jesus, Jesus. And, of course, many people uh, that follow Jesus refer to him as rabbi. What does rabbi mean? Teacher, teacher. Jesus had a habit of teaching wherever he was at the local synagogue. Can you imagine what an amazing teacher Jesus must have been in that synagogue? To our Lee Road kids who are now over in the Bridge Kids program, they started back to school this week. I wanted to ask them, what would it be like to have Jesus 
as one of your teachers in the room. Wow, right? And Jesus not only taught the people, he healed the people. You know, I always felt this, that the best teachers not only love their subjects, meaning their curriculum, but they love their students. They love their students. Did you ever t have a teacher that was uh, so busy teaching that they didn't have time to be bothered when someone was suffering in their classroom or something was going on? They just couldn't be bothered because we got to stick to the math, the science, the history, the English. Well, Jesus wasn't like that. Praise God that Jesus is not like that. Jesus always gets involved, always gets involved. And so when he saw her faithfulness and he saw how she had suffered, and remember he's God, he knew how long she had suffered, he immediately called her to come to him. Wow. Now what would you do if Jesus called you this morning to come to him? Would you approach him boldly? Would you come before him unashamedly and say, Lord, I need you in my life? And that's what this woman did. The Bible doesn't tell us what she said. We don't know that, if anything. But she did what he asked. He asked her to come, and she did. He touched her, and immediately, straightway, she straightened. She straightened, and she began to praise God. Can you imagine her joy? Wow, 18 years of suffering had ended for her. 18 years, every crooked bone, every tendon, Every muscle in her neck and spine was healed. And finally, she could look into the Lord's eyes directly with her head held up. You see, she could never really see him before because of her condition. What do you think that she felt in her heart as she straightened and looked at her Savior in the eye? I believe it's very similar to what Fanny Crosby said. Fanny Crosby, the famous Methodist uh, hymn writer who wrote over 6,000 hymns, including Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. She says that when she gets to heaven, she said to her friends, his face will be the first that I will see. You see, she'd been blind since a childhood uh, time period in her life, and the doctor had given her wrong medicine and had blinded her as a little child. So the first face that this woman had seen in 18 years directly was Jesus. Now, of course, the synagogue leaders, the religious people, they were so glad this woman was healed, right, church? Right? <laughs> You're laughing. No, they were not. They were not. They were angry. Why were they angry? Because Jesus had healed this woman on the Sabbath. They had, Jesus had broken, they, they thought, a law. They don't realize that Jesus is God. That he's the author of the law. And, and, and trying to get Jesus for breaking his law is an impossible mess. But besides that, Jesus knew that they were nothing more than fake and phony hypocrites. Now, in the Message Bible, which I like, he says, You frauds, you frauds. Each Sabbath, every one of you regularly unties your cow and or your donkey from its stall, leads it out for water, and you think nothing of it. So why isn't it all right for me to untie this daughter of Abraham and lead her from the stall where Satan has had her tied these 18 years? Folks, I want you to listen carefully. We serve a God on the move. We serve a God of action a God who intervenes in our brokenness and our messy lives. We serve a God who can make the crooked straight. You say to me, Pastor, I love this story that you've told, but how does that apply to me? I don't require any straightening up. I have nothing bad in my life that I need to be liberated from. I mean no disrespect to you, my friend, but I have to say au contraire. Au contraire, never forget that the heavy burden of sin, which is our spirit of infirmity. The load of sin is so heavy that sometimes we can't even lift our eyes towards heaven. Have you ever been there before? You're so convicted with your sins. You're so bent over with the load of your sin that you can't even lift your eyes towards heaven. 
I've got news for you. We cannot free ourselves from sin. We can't. We are under the bondage of Satan until Christ sets us free. Now, here's the good news. The grace of God can make the foulest clean. The grace of Jesus Christ can make the most crooked individual to be straight. And the grace of the Holy Spirit will lift you up and truly set you free. If you've never truly been set free, if you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, I invite you to talk to me today or our prayer team members today. Furthermore, if Jesus is your Savior, He is your Savior, you can claim Him, but you're suffering even now under some heavy burden, again, I invite you to meet with me in prayer or one of our team members today. With all my heart, I know and I'm telling you the truth. Jesus is the great physician. He's the one who can heal us. He is the great surgeon. He can make the crooked straight. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let's bow our heads and go to God before we have our offering today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending us Jesus our great physician and healer of our every ill and brokenness. Lord, we come before you now, and we just ask that your spirit be upon us and that you set us free from the sins that bind us. And Lord, one more thing as we now give back just a portion of our riches to you. May these gifts be acceptable for use in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Like an old train, want to know you, Lord. Want to know you, Lord. Like an old train, want to know you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord. Like an old want to know you, Lord. So I'm laying down all my religion. I'm laying down. I want to know you, Lord. I'm laying down all my religion. I'm laying I want to know you, Lord. 
some measure right. Lord, I've been told I'm not good enough. But you're here with me. So I'm laying down all my Dear church friends and family, every one of us has something in our life that is not right. And every one of us is crooked in some way, shape, or form. But the good news is we serve a risen Savior. He's alive today. And I promise you, he not only sets the captive free, but he makes the crooked straight. Turn to him and ask for forgiveness of your sins and you will be blessed. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.
generations in your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you behind you and beside you all around you Sunday.